Today's episode is brought to you by Domain.com. Welcome to a special episode of Film Riot's Epic Summer. Last Thursday, we did plan to release Seth Worley's latest short film and his first behind-the-scenes episode, but due to unplanned setbacks, which always happen, we decided to push it back a week to make sure it gets released right. But instead of leaving you with one less episode, I decided to get to something that we weren't able to get to, which is color grading using magic bullet looks right inside of Premiere. Like I talked about last week, for the first half of UFO Yeah, the film was graded by Ryan Schroeder of Transposition Films, which again, you can find their stuff right here. But Ryan graded the first half of the film in Resolve, which is great, but once we got into the VFX shots, getting towards the end of our deadline, getting those VFX shots finished, we didn't have enough time to get those shots to Ryan to grade the second half, because he lives in Vancouver, and internet. So I graded the second half of the film myself, but instead of using Resolve, I use Magic Bullet looks right inside of Adobe Premiere, which I love working this way. With all the additions that have come in Magic Bullet and Premiere, including the ability to mask, it really has become a powerful grading tool. But instead of showing you one of the night shots, which mostly were straightforward and simple grades, I'm going to recreate the opening shot, which was originally done in DaVinci, since that one is more of a complicated shot in the film. So the first thing I'm gonna do is find a good frame to work off of for my final look, and right here is a good one and then I'll apply magic bullet looks. And here the first thing we're gonna do is add curves, taking up the mids a touch and bringing down the shadows just a bit, which is just leveling off my image some. Then after that, I will throw on some color reset. This is where I will start to add the intended color back in since this was shot in c -Log. So I'll throw a touch of blue into those shadows, but not taking it too far since we keep the cabin feeling orange. That way the blue of the ship from outside is a big switch in our visuals later on. After that, I will add HSL colors where I will take the orange in the shot and pull it down just a bit to get that cool laptop glow on his face, again being careful not to take it too far and lose that warm feel. Next in line, I take the saturation of the mids and the shadows down just a bit, and finally, I will add their latest tool, Film Print, which will emulate the look of different film stocks. And they have that breakout plugin, of course, but I've really been digging using it right inside of looks. Now off the bat, this does look crazy, way too much, but we are gonna do some tweaking, of course. First, we can change the stock up here to one of four options, but I'm happy with the first one, so we're just gonna leave it at that. Then we go down and take our color temp to minus 15, our tint to minus 2.10%, our exposure to 0.6, contrast to minus 17.9, saturation to around 113, and vintage modern, I'll toy with taking it more towards modern, which is adding some contrast, some cool into the shadows while retaining the warmth in the mids. Finally, I'll take my grain to an area that I like. For this, I wanted it pretty grainy. The whole thing was supposed to feel like the 70s or early 80s Spielbergian look, so I went with 70% here. I wasn't always going that high though. Some shots, 70% was a bit too much, so I would drop it down to 50 or even sometimes 40%. And now we have our look for the shot before, and after. Of course, we have a lot of noise in the dark areas there, but I was always planning to denoise first, so I'll add denoise or two above Magic Bullet and set that to something subtle like 35 just so we can clean up those darker areas. Now, if we jump back to the beginning of the shot to check everything else, we see as we scrub through that the map is too dark at the beginning and the papers are too bright after that, but that is an easy fix. I'll jump back to the map area, add an instance of Colorista 2, up the exposure to about 0.50, which is looking good. Then I'll drop the saturation a bit to compensate for what the exposure did. But now we only want this to affect the map. So in Premiere CC 2014, we have the option of creating individual masks with each effect. So I will click the pen here, create a mask around my map, feather it, and then keyframe that to follow the map until the map is completely off screen, which of course I can let Premiere track this if I wanted to as well. Then I add another instance of Colorista and do the exact same thing for the papers on the table, but this time taking the exposure down instead of up. And the final thing that I'm going to add to this shot was a plugin called Beauty Box. This is just gonna clean up Ned's face a bit, smoothing it all out and giving it that finishing touch. So I'll add that in and right off the bat, create a mask around Ned's face and track that to follow so this is only affecting his face. And inside the tools here for Beauty Box, I'll grab the color picker for the dark areas and select a shadow section of his face, then light color and select a brighter area of skin. Next, I'll turn on the mask and tweak the values down here to get them where I want them. Then come up here to smoothing them out and take that down to about 10. Detail smoothing to zero, contrast enhanced to 56. Then I turn off show mask and we have it. It's a subtle way to smooth out the skin tones and even bring out his eyes. Of course, with those settings, you're gonna wanna toy with it yourself because each shot is gonna be a little bit different. But with all that done, we have our final before and after. If you're an entrepreneur, innovator, or inventor of any kind, Domain.com is a place to go for your next great idea. Domain.com has a domain extension list of 200 plus and growing extensions like .expert, .cc, .nyc, .club, and so on. And we can save you money off your domain names and web hosting by using the coupon code FILMRIGHT. At checkout, you get 20% off all that goodness. So when you think domain names, think Domain.com. 
Well, that's it for today. If you want to follow any of the filmmakers or collaborators on UFO Yeah, check the notes section below. But just one more week till Seth Worley's latest film, Rise for Your Eye Holes. If you have not seen the teaser for that, go here to check that out. And I'll see you guys next week for all them goodies.